Let's continue the point. Because fifth, the gospel transforms our conception of identity. Transforms it. The Bible never teaches us to hate our ethnicity. The Bible does not teach us that our background, in providential terms, we got it all wrong. It does teach us, though, that there is a unifying force that is far, far greater than our ethnicity, skin skin color, and cultural heritage. And that force is the gospel of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 16. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. A few of us, some of us were saying this, some of you have said this in conversations with folks pulled toward wokeness, haven't you? We don't regard anyone according to the flesh in terms of white people being hated in this country, as they definitely are by some. They're targeted. That's wicked. That's evil. That's wrong. That should be decried. That should be ended. That that is no place in the church. But now it goes the opposite way, doesn't it? We regard no one according to the flesh in terms of thinking that our natural ethnicity is itself to be preserved above all else. We don't regard anyone according, ultimately, in the church to their skin color or background or ethnicity. Why? Because we are a gospel people. In Christ, Galatians 3.28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither slave nor free, there's no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Satan hates this. I repeat, he hates gospel unity. He hates the gospel that unites across all divides in the natural world, but God loves a people from every tribe, tongue, nation, and people group on earth. This leads us to see sixth, that we are no longer alienated from other ethnicities. There is no hostility between you and anyone else in terms of background in Christ. It does not exist. It has been canceled. Ephesians 2, 15. In His flesh, Jesus has broken down the dividing wall of hostility, verse 15, by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that He might create in Himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace between Jew and Gentile, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. This and this alone is where inter-ethnic strife ceases. It is the church. It, it aligns elegantly with what James Coates was talking about some hours ago, that the church is where God displays His wisdom. That is exactly what James read from Ephesians 3.10. And that's what is in my message as well, because this is so vital. It's in the church that God's wisdom is displayed, not out in the culture. Don't expect the world to display the wisdom of God. Paul has told us that it is through the church that God's wisdom is made known. This is according to God's eternal purpose. This is all in the Greek, a single term that sums up the effect of the gospel, mysterion. It's the mysterion. It's defined in Ephesians 3, 6. The mystery, Paul writes, is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The mystery of the gospel is that Jew and Gentile do not prefer their own. Jew and Gentile do not associate with their own kind, first and foremost. Jew and Gentile don't even see their identity as their identity any longer in a very strong way. That's all superseded. That's all altered. That's all transformed by the gospel of grace. The blood of Jesus Christ has made us one. Babel has been Pentecosted. Babel has been crucified. And now in Christ, the wisdom of God is displayed that people do not harbor native prejudice, and partiality against one another. We die to that. God loves diversity, understood rightly. God loves His inter-ethnic church. God loves uniting people 
who have absolutely nothing in common outside of Jesus. These are not fourth-level matters. These are gospel matters. Anyone who does not stand for these truths, I fear, either is in open sin against the gospel that has claimed them, which is a reality. We all stumble in many ways, James 3, 2. And therefore, they need to repent, or they do not know the true gospel, but think they do. And if they do, let them hear the gospel afresh and let kinism die. Seventh and finally, all who are in Christ are now a holy nation. We're now a holy nation. We've heard this already. It was in Jeff Moore's talk, so we really are on similar streams here. But 1 Peter 2.9 tells us that we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We are not trying to build a Christian nation. We are a Christian nation in Christ. It is not the kind. I, I agree with fellow speakers of, of different kinds thus far. It is not the case that this really feels triumphant here and now. It is not the case that this holy nation is necessarily going to win a whole lot of elections. It is not the case that this holy nation looks and feels strong. You and I, in many cases, look and feel weak, small. But God loves small things. God loves the weak. God blesses the tiny. God chooses the few. God does His own work according to His own calculations, and He does not need any assistance from us. We do not need and we should not want a Christian prince. Christ is our King. God is gathering in His people. Christ is building His church. The Spirit is uniting beautifully people who have nothing in common but Jesus. Do not shift from the hope of the gospel, brothers and sisters. Colossians 1.23, remain stable and steadfast now. Satan wants you off kilter, paranoid, tense, angry, divisive, roiled up, fighting at all times, at all hours, in perpetual political theology cage stage. You remember Calvinism cage stage? Some of you may be in it now. It's okay. You're going to make it through. We're in political theology cage stage right now. We need some, some of us. We need to come out of it, and we need to hear this as well. We must reject kinism. This is a line in the sand. Kinism has no biblical backing. If you do hold to CN, reject kinism. The inter-ethnic church is glorious. We must honor the teaching of the Word of God. Brothers and sisters, our presentation of the gospel is at stake. These are serious times and serious days. God will do the work. Take heart in that. Jesus loves His church. Let's pray. Father, thank You for Your truth and Your gospel. Forgive us. We all stumble. I pray that You would protect Your church by the power of Your Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please subscribe. Hit the notification bell for more truth and to spread the light of Jesus Christ. Thank you.